So here we are looking at the ET3400A again. One of the add-ons that you can get for an ET3400A is called the ET3404. And the ET3404 is this board here, which is a 6809. This replaces the 6808 CPU that is on there. And unfortunately, it is not binary compatible with the 6808, so they had to include a new ROM image. So that's why you'll see that there is a ROM on there as well. There are also a few different I.O. lines. You will see there's a couple new um, logic chips here and some uh, breakouts here for some pin. And this is not an original ET3404 board. This happens to be my own clone of it. I found the schematic online and I cloned it more or less the same as the original with one change, which is rather than use the original ROM, I used um, a 28C64 erasable EEPROM, so an EEPROM. I tend to use the 2864 in a lot of my projects. So anyway, let's swap this out and we'll see if this thing will turn on. So I'm going to unplug it, and then I will get out my chip extractor. Come on, you. Old sockets can be kind of stubborn. I like to be gentle with these old chips, so we'll just take him and we'll just set him down here and get him out of the way. Then we'll also pull the ROM, since it has a 6808 code in it instead of 6809. Put him out of the way. And then this uh, ET3404 board, it's got some pins down here that will go into the original socket, so it's just going to kind of piggyback on there. Make sure to line it up straight, got the pins in where they belong. What we've shown so far is for the ET3400A, the newer model of the trainer. For the older model of the trainer, the ET3400, you also have to make an additional change, which is to add this um, clock adapter. So you have to build this on a little 14-pin uh, socket, add the capacitor and resistor, remove the clock chip, and then plug this in in its place. So keep that in mind if you want to do this modification and you have the older ET3400 rather than the newer ET3400A. Now let's power up. Now, I've had this problem before about all of these segments not lighting up properly. I don't know what is up with that. I do wonder if it's like, there we go. There's like maybe some kind of power supply glitch or something. Maybe I need to look into this trainer a little bit. But anyway, now it's saying CPU up. And the new um, ROM monitor works just like the old one, so examine. FC00, there's data in there. Just like it should be, let's examine 0000. This is the RAM, there's a C7. Change that to a 78. And then examine 0000, 78. Now you can see here, I, the RAM chips are removed and my expansion adapter is connected down here. Uh, that has the additional RAM and it has the, the ROM basic down there and the monitors down there. That stuff is all sitting at 1400 hex and it should be incompatible with the 6809 because they're not binary compatible, the 6808 and the 6809. So I'm just going to execute it and see what happens. I assume it will not work. Well, I don't know. It blanked. Maybe it's doing something. It'll be in. We'll have to check and see what it did. Now I'm curious, I didn't expect it to work. Okay, now let's try doing one of the labs that goes along with the ET3404. So the labs are not as interesting as some of the interfacing labs where you might have um, installed wires and circuits and things. They're mostly about using the addressing modes of the CPU. So this is experiment number two from the book, which has us enter some code that will set some things into the accumulators um, A and B. So let's, um, let's do this lab. So we're going to auto 0000. 
Okay, reset the trainer. Execute the program by doing do zero 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 zero. Um, now the last instruction was actually a stop, so I think it's not a problem that nothing is being displayed. We need to reset the trainer again. And now it wants us to examine the contents of accumulator A by pressing ACC and A. So let's push ACC. And accumulator A, it says, should have the value AA because uh, they loaded um, accumulator A with the value AA. Now examine uh, the contents of accumulator B by pressing ACC in the B key. Uh, so ACC, B. And it says here you should observe the value BB. We do, um, since the instruction loaded the accumulator B with BB. Examine the contents of accumulator D. Accumulator D. Um, you should observe the value AABB since accumulator D is formed by the combination of accumulators A and B. So, okay, yeah. Examine memory location 0050 and 0051. Should it be AA and BB? 0050. Oh, whoops. Examine 0051. So, yep, it is what it's supposed to be. And then it says, why did that happen? Um, well, the reason why is because the program said to um, store it, store accumulator D uh, to addresses 50 and 51. Um, examine the contents of the direct page register, DPR. I think that um, you're supposed to replace these keycaps with different symbols, so I think the DP is over here. It's on the two key now. Yeah, so it says DP uh, by pressing um, DP should observe the value 00, zero since a reset operation automatically clears the direct page register. Change it. Two zero one. Execute the program again without pressing reset. Do zero 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 zero. Now reset the trainer and examine accumulator D. You should observe the value A A B B as before. Okay. Examine locations 150 and 151. Uh, so these are different locations. It had us look at um, memory location 0050. Now we're looking at 0150 and 0151. Um, you should observe the value stored there um, at 150 and 151 and why. And I think the reason why would be because we changed the DP register. Um, so that is it. That was experiment number two, I believe, in the manual. And if you were new to the 6809, this would have taught you a bit about how the 6809 registers work. There are several more experiments that would have taught you much more about the 6809. But this also proves that the adapter is working in here. Now, why would you want one of these adapters in your ET3400 trainer? Well, one reason is you just want to complete everything. You want to have everything that Heathkit made for it, and this was one thing that it made for it. Another reason, maybe you want to learn about the 6809 microprocessor. It was certainly a popular microprocessor back in the day. Now, one of the problems I had when I first um, started developing this board, it did not work. I plugged it in. I just got gibberish on the display. Nothing at all worked. It would not even generate clocks. And that was using these 6809s here. These came from a US eBay seller that seemed like a reputable place. It might have even been one that I dealt with before with a good past history. I'm not sure if I dealt with this one, but it looked familiar. The, uh, the support person on it actually responded to me um, in clear language, and I had no trouble communicating with them. It seems like a really up and up place, but these two 6809Ps that I got from them did not work. Only later did I get this 6809P from a guy on the ET3400 group, uh, Greg, sent me a one that he had tested and knew was good, and I was able to prove that my board works. So I want to try out these ones back in here and see if we can figure out what is up with these chips that came from eBay. Are they fakes? Are they just broken? Let's try and see if we can figure out what's wrong with them. So first, let's demonstrate the problem. Unplugging the trainer. We will pop out the known good.
and let's insert one of the bad ones. Got them seated in all the way up. And we'll plug it in. So we've just got gibberish here. Push the reset button, it doesn't do anything. Does nothing. And it's actually the case that if I was to remove the board entirely, same sort of gibberish. So the CPU is not even running. It's not doing anything. That's just nonsense on the display. But let's put it back on here again. Got it seated properly. And let's try, I plugged it back in, let's try to diagnose what is going on. Now I have hooked my oscilloscope up to the E and Q lines from the CPU. Now the 6809P has an internal clock generator. There's a clock crystal here, a couple capacitors attached to it, goes into the CPU. The CPU will generate the E and Q pulses for the rest of the system, as well as generating those clock pulses for itself. So we've got this hooked up to our oscilloscope and there is just, there is absolutely nothing, nothing going on here on the oscilloscope. So just, um, it's not clocking at all. Yeah, I'm just sweeping through the time ranges, nothing's going on. Now if I unplug this, and I pop that IC out, do with my tweezers. We'll just pop this out. For a moment, we'll stick the known good one back in. Plug it back on, and uh, there you go. Here, let's adjust the um, scale. A uh, little, little glitchy, but that's how it's supposed to look. You know, you can see there are there are clock pulses occurring. I put the IC under the microscope so you can take a look at it. This is the one from eBay. Um, and you can see it clearly does say on the IC it says 6809P. Um, now for comparison, this is one here above it. This is my known good um, IC. The one, the one that I got from an associate on the ET3400 mailing list. Um, so it also says MC6809P. Um, a few differences in these ICs. Um, the known good one does not have a notch on the end. It has a dot there, but no notch. Um, whereas um, uh, the suspected counterfeit does have a notch in addition to the dot. I don't know if that's significant. You know, um, chips could be fabbed in different places. Um, I can't really see anything about the screen printing that would lead me to believe it is or is not fake. It certainly is a pretty clear um, screen printing on this one. You know, in the legitimate one, screen printing looks um, similar. So I also, back when I started this project, I ordered a bunch of chips from China and they actually arrived here. So I got about 10 of them. Uh, you can see there's eight of them here. I've got a couple other ones sitting out on the um, on the table that we're going to take a look at under the microscope. And I tested these 10 chips and two of them tested bad with the exact same symptoms as my suspected uh, counterfeits. The other eight of them tested good. Uh, now what's going on? If I put them under the microscope, uh, the bad one is marked with the, uh, the red marker. The good one is alongside of it. Uh, without the red marker and you can see that the markings on the chips pretty much look identical um, the same date code the same Motorola logo um, looks pretty much the same same marks in the ends the, the dot and the uh, the notch on the end looking at the underside they look pretty much the same now this I, I think pretty much refutes my theory that the other ones were counterfeits because I would not expect to get a batch from China of identically marked chips and have only two out of ten of them be counterfeits and eight out of ten be good. I mean I suppose anything is possible uh, but it just seems um, 
unlikely. So I wonder if something else is going on. Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sand rail stuff. Bye.